When was the last time you took a leap of faith trusting that everything is going to work out? Do you crave growth or are you merely content with the status quo? If you want more out of your life, out of your career, and out of your relationships, you are in the right place. Take the leap and discover how to create a life by design rather than living it by default. Real success starts with you. Now here's your host, Colleen Biggs. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Take the Leap. I am your host, as always, Colleen Biggs, and today is going to be a fun episode because we're going to be talking about how to sound amazing with my guest, Liz Drury. You're going to want to stick around for this one because all of us speak, right? And it doesn't mean you're speaking in public. It's just that you're just speaking to a colleague. You're ordering food in the fast food drive through whatever it is sound has a and tone has a lot to do with um, your communication with other people so we're going to be diving in that today and I'm excited for that but first I would love to thank our sponsor for today's podcast Phoenix drone pros at Phoenix drone pros we love what we do and are passionate about each and every drone photography and video shoot we've been in business since 2017 our talent and skills shows in the video production we deliver. We offer fast service for commercial real estate, movies, events, construction site monitoring. We also provide drone visual tours that are all the rage right now. These virtual tours are great for team building and entertainment. Contest, contact us today at phoenixdronepros.com to schedule your shoot online or to get more information. We capture everything. Well, thank you so much, Phoenix Drone Pros, for being our sponsor on today's show. Well, let's hop over to our beautiful guest who is in her sound booth today. So those of you that are currently uh, listening on the podcast, hop over to Colleen Biggs on Facebook. You'll find me in the blue shirt and white pants and my beautiful family is my background and hop on over and, and, and see how Liz has her studio set up because she does a lot of voiceovers. And so she's in a soundproof booth. And this is going to be something we're going to talk about today. Uh, and don't forget again, uh, we've got our grants going for November, uh, our gratitude grants. All you have to do is hop over to uh, ColleenBiggs.net, sign up for our community so you can be seen, be heard and be visible everywhere. And that's part of what Liz is doing today by being on our podcast. So Liz Drury was born and brought up in Northamptonshire and now lives in rural North Lincolnshire in the UK. She has a degree in natural sciences from the University of Durham and a PhD in archaeological science from the University of Bradford. After working in local television and education, she began working as a voiceover artist in 2013 whilst living in the USA. She has worked across many voiceover genres, including commercials, e-learning, corporate videos, and audio tours for clients such as Bulgari, JCB, Booking.com, Hilton Garden Inn, Nestle, and many others. In 2017, congratulations, she was named as one of the UK's top 100 small businesses, which led to an invitation to a reception at 10 Downing Street. She has also been nominated for a number of voiceover and business awards. Liz, welcome to the show today. Thank you so much for having me. Yes. So I'm excited to jump into this. And your biggest leap that you said that you had taken in life was moving to America with your husband's job and using that op opportunity to train in voiceover with starting your own business. So take us through a little bit of where were you before you decided to travel to the USA with your husband? What were you doing and how was that kind of out of the box for you? Okay. So at that time, I was working for um, a college um, and I had previously worked in local television a long time ago before I had my children. My eldest is now 20, so that's how long ago that was. And I'd done some voiceover work when I worked there. Then I had this big gap and I went to work at the college and I wasn't teaching. I was um, part of the support staff. So I was doing things like making connections between the college and local business. Um, you're finding internships for students, running conferences, all kinds of things, you know, supporting things, supporting roles that weren't actually teaching. So that's where I was um, when my husband got the call to say, would you come and work in the USA for a couple of years? 
And I was really fortunate in that my my boss, the the principal of the college, said, "Yes, go take a sabbatical. We'll keep your job open for you. You'll still be here when you come back." So that was kind of helped our decision to go because I knew I wasn't going to be earning any money once we got to the states. Um, so we moved to uh, Maryland. We were living near Baltimore, and my husband, of course, was going to work. Our kids were going to school, and so. I was at a bit of a loose end because I didn't have a work permit, uh, at least to start with. And that the, the kind of visa that I had meant that I, I wasn't allowed to work. I had to apply for the permit um, and I couldn't do that until I'd lived there for at least three months and I had to jump through a load of hoops. Um, so I kind of put working on the back burner for a bit and I thought, well, what, what do I want to do? Um, and so I used the opportunity to train in a couple of things that I'd always been interested in and always done, which was singing and acting, but I'd never had any formal training in before. So I signed up with my uh, one of my local community colleges and I went there and I did acting 111 and acting 112. Uh, and I joined the community chorus and I had singing lessons and I had a really great time, actually. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and then I saw this course advertised through my local um, parks and recreation, which was called Acting for the Camera. And I thought, oh, it'd be so much fun to get back in front of a camera again. Uh, so I went along and it was an evening class and only four people showed up. So the tutor said, well, I've got things planned, but because there's only a few of you, tell me what you're interested in and I will tailor the course to you. So I said to her, well, I've had a bit of experience with voiceover because when I I, when I used to work in local television, but I've never had any training and I've got no idea how to go about taking that any further. And she was brilliant. She was a, a local actress who actually did some voiceover work herself. So she pointed me in the right direction and she actually found me my first client. It was a friend of hers who runs a recording studio. And he sometimes needs British accents for the uh, for the videos he's working on. So I did some work for him and she told me about um, websites where I could have a profile and clients would post auditions. Um, and that she kind of pointed me in the right direction and got me started. So, yeah, that was my big leap. And I you know, I went to America, not intending to come back with a new career, but that's what happened. <laughs> and how nice was it that they were going to save your position at the school and have a sabbatical and then you go to America take all these courses in the schools and then wind up starting your own business without even, you just fell into that really by curiosity. Yeah. curiosity. Yeah, that's right. And the kind of the next thing that happened was once I started exploring it a bit more and I'd, I'd had these sort of first jobs through my, through my tutors um, contact and through some of these websites I'd signed up to, I realized I was only going to get more work and better paid work if I had a properly produced voiceover demo. So I then was doing research as to who could help me with that and came across a company called Edge Studio, who who I must mention. And they're based in New York, but they had a satellite studio in Washington, D.C., which is about 40 minutes drive from where we were living. And Edge Studio not only produced demos for voiceover artists, they trained them as well. So I did actually signed up and did six months of training with Edge Studio in how to be a good voiceover artist and how to run a voiceover business as well. Um, and that that really got me started. And of course, I then applied for my work permit and I started my business in the States. And then I had a whole new career to, to bring back to the UK with me. And I did go back to the college um, because I felt I owed them that. They'd been good enough to keep my position open. But I only did 15 hours a week for them. So I was able to do that part time nice. and build up my business part time. Um, and so, you know, I was able to do both things for a while. Yeah. I'm glad you mentioned that because so many ladies that I work with, they automatically go to, uh, thinking that because they're starting their own business, they can only draw income from that, that they're doing in their mm-hmm. business. And you, like I have proved, cause I did personal training and taught fitness classes when I became an entrepreneur, I made income from everywhere. Uh, Mm -hmm. at the time that I was building my business, it doesn't really matter where the income's coming from. So you went back and still worked 15 hours at the school to help you with uh, drawing some income in while you were building your business to the point where your business could be full-time. And I'm assuming that's what you are today. 
Yes, that's right. Yeah. And and actually what kind of pushed my decision in the end, I, I'd intended to go back to, to the college for a year. I thought, you know, that I owe them at least that much. And then I will hand my notice in and I will go full time. And and I didn't, not because um, I wasn't getting voiceover work, I was, but I actually remembered how much I really liked working <laughs> at the college. And what happened in the end was they made my role redundant. And so that was the push that I needed to you know, to, to go and do this full time and to, to grow my business to, to a point where I can you know, uh, create a full time salary from it. Well, I, I know that some of the listeners uh, that we have today have maybe thought about, well, I have a great voice and I could be, I've never thought about that, by the way, that's never <laughs> been a thing that's ever come up for me because my voice goes up and down too much. I don't have like a solid tone. Uh, I get way too passionate and excited and I yell. So I know that's not a thing for me. I already know that. But many of our listeners might be listening today and thinking, I've thought about doing audible books or voiceovers. And and I've really wanted to get into that um, that uh, type of career. What would be some suggestions that you would give to those listeners that are like, wow, I'm really intrigued by what Liz is doing and how she just fell into it? Is there specific training you would recommend that they start with, you know? And then we'll get into really how do you how to sound amazing, mm. like what those pieces are. But what would you suggest for someone that doesn't have any experience in this like you did not? And then you were, you know, you kind of fell into it now that you've experienced it. What steps should they take to start? Yeah. So I would say if you're in the U.S., then definitely check out Edge Studio, who. Yeah, that, that's the company that, that I trained with. Um, and they do a lot of their training online. You know, I, I I did some training in person with coaches in Washington, D.C., but I also did a lot um, online with coaches who were based in New York. So it doesn't really matter whereabouts in the country you're based. You, know, you, can, you can do that training remotely. And, you know, as I said before, they don't just train people in voiceover, but they also train them how to run a voiceover business because, you know, you might have a great voice, but if you know nothing about marketing yourself, you're not going to get any work. Right. Um, so, yeah, you know, I would highly recommend checking them out. And what I really like about Edge, um, certainly this was the case when when I signed up with them, is that they will assess everybody first. So you will either do, um, you can have a one-to-one -one assessment or you can join with a small group. And I think I did it with about 10 other people. Um, and they will listen to you reading various types of script um, and they will critique you and you have to critique yourself and critique other people. And at the end of that process, they will tell you what your voice is suited to and whether it's worth your while pursuing things any any further. And there is a cost to doing that. I, th I think it was about I think it was ninety nine dollars or something. But if you then decide you're going to go and do some more training with them, you get that money knocked off. So I thought that was really fair that, that, yeah. that they did that because, you know, people can say, oh, yes, um, you know, I've been told I've got a great voice. But you might that you when you when you're listened to by a professional, the professional might say, actually, it's really not worth your time and your money doing this. You'll be better spending your money on something else. <laughs> I wish more people would tell those individuals that go to sing when they show up on uh, singing shows that maybe this isn't your direction that you should take instead of letting them get up there and them think that they're amazing because mm. everyone close to them in their entire life has. I think that's an important piece, Liz. Mm. Listen to the professionals that do voiceover work. And if they tell you, Eh, I don't think your voice is really suited for this. There may not be training available for you to train your voice to what it needs to be. Mm -mm. Yeah, I'm glad that you said that. That's super important. Um, and thank you for all of the information of where they should go to get the training. Now, stepping next into that, I, I love that they not only help you with the voiceover, but help you run the business. That's the most important piece, right? Mm -hmm. You can't run a business and voiceover if you don't know how to get yourself out there to be seen and be visible. How, how, wh what would you say are some tips that you've utilized? And it can be things like a soundproof, you know, studio or, but how, what are some things we can do to sound amazing? Like I've got some tips on this too, but cause I might be looking, I might be hearing from a different, you know, perspective than you, but what would you say if someone said asked you how how what are some tips, Liz, on how I can sound amazing? What would you give those tips? Yeah, well, you definitely don't need 
a soundproof booth if you're just recording, let's say, your voicemail greeting for your business. But there are things that you can do to make it sound as good as you possibly can. Um, And the first tip is to record it in a quiet space, but in a space that doesn't have a lot of hard surfaces. So something like a kitchen or a bathroom, do not record in there because there are so many hard surfaces, your voice is going to bounce about all over the place and you'll get lots of echo, which is not what you want. So you need to be in a, a bedroom or a living room where there's carpet and there's curtains or drapes, as you guys call them, <laughs> and cushions and things that are going to absorb the sound. So um, you know, the more um, soft fabrics there are in the area you're recording, the better it's going to be. And what you can do if if you uh, if you haven't got any carpets in your house and you've got hard floors, something you can do is to put your let's say you're recording at your phone, um, put your phone, you know, prop it up somewhere and surround it with cushions or pillows, and then talk into it um, so that your voice is going to be absorbed by the cushions and the pillows around the phone or or the microphone. In fact, so that would be my first tip. My second tip when you're recording. Let's let's go on with it with the example of a voicemail greeting. Smile, smile while you're recording because a smile comes out in your voice. We can hear a smile, um, and I give a talk about this actually, and um, I, I've done it this week to a group uh, a group of uh, ladies at a networking meeting. And I got somebody out of the audience and I got to read something and I got everyone else in the room to close their eyes, and I got her to read this piece of text twice. And I said, I you want, I want you to smile once. Uh, on one reading and not on the other, but don't tell me which way round you're going to do it. Because I want to see if people can tell the time you were smiling and every single person could tell the time that she was smiling. So that's a really important tip. Another tip is to imagine that you're talking to just one person. Um, and you know, if, if this is a, a business recording you're doing, like your voicemail greeting or a little video that's going to go on on your um, on your website or your social media channels, Imagine you are speaking to your ideal client. And if you've already got an ideal client and you know who they are, you can picture them in your mind while you're speaking. If you haven't got an ideal client yet, then think of a celebrity who represents your ideal client. And if it helps, and it often does help, print out a picture of that person and be actually speaking to that picture to that picture of the person when you're delivering your, your, um, your script. And that comes out as much more personable and you know like like you were talking to one person and my last tip would be to think about how you want your business to come across what adjectives describe the vibe of your business you are you are you upbeat are you friendly are you more serious and have that adjective in mind when you're recording because again that affects your delivery slightly um if you're thinking upbeat upbeat your your sound will be upbeat and um yeah, so those those are my top tips for um, for uh, sounding amazing. <laughs> you heard them first here today on the Take the Leap podcast. Liz's top tips on how to sound amazing. And by the way, those were really good tips. I had no idea that if you placed your phone on the cushions and surrounded it, that it would absorb the sound from you talking into it like that. I had no mm-hmm. idea that that would happen. So that was a really great tip. And smiling. Oh my gosh, people. Could we smile a little bit more already? That was a that was a great tip too. And um, and for those of you that didn't see, uh, you know, and are listening on the podcast through your you know, earphones and you're not watching, jump over to Colleen Biggs on Facebook because you're going to be able to see Liz and her video because she smiled through the time that she was saying to smile. And you could tell that her that her voice changed uh, through that. And I love that. And good tips on voicemail, because how many voicemails have you gotten listen for other people that you were just like, oh, my gosh, that's horrible. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And and, you know, that might be the first impression a potential new client gets of your business. So right. it's actually really important that you have a really good sounding voicemail greeting. That's right. You know, I leave something on my voicemail that I had read in a book years ago, and it's about um, making someone's day and smiling at someone today. And you know how many people, when they leave me a voicemail, they say, wow, That voicemail made my day. I'm going to smile at someone today. They always say that when they leave me a voicemail, just because I had that in my voicemail. So that kind of tells that person what type of person I am, right? Just from my voicemail when I leave it, that I'm a positive, upbeat person. And they always leave voicemails that say something about what my voicemail said. So think about that 
Ever. We should all think about that when we're leaving those voicemails. It's not only how you sound, it's what you say that's so that's so crucial. Um, and you said you've worked in genres all over the place, commercials, ebooks, voiceovers. What was your biggest project or what would I say? What was your most favorite project that you got to work on that you just absolutely just were thrilled to do? Yeah, the, the, there's two that spring to mind and they're not the biggest paid projects that I've done, but they were just the most fun. So one was was earlier this year and I recorded a narration to go alongside a sculpture that was installed in York Minster, uh, which, you know, if anyone has ever been to York, York Minster is, is, is the cathedral in York. Absolutely beautiful building, lovely space to be in. And the sculpture itself was made from little pieces of broken glass that have been wired together and made into the shape of a wave. Uh, and the name of the sculpture, it was called Faith and Fracture. Mm. And so I narrated all about um, how this had come about and what the bits of glass represented and who the artists were and so on and so forth. And um, at the time I did the narration, I had seen a picture of the sculpture, but I hadn't actually seen seen it in real life. I just, you know, just had the script. So once it was installed, I, I went along to York to see it. Um, and, and it was an amazing thing. So that was wonderful to be part of that. The other project that um, I absolutely loved doing was for a local um, children's farm park, uh, you know, where children go to pet the small animals and see, see the farm animals and feed the animals and so on. And at Christmas, they they have this sort of wonderful Christmas extravaganza. Oh, and they asked me if I would be the voice of the train that was taking the children to see Santa. Mm. And that was just a lovely thing to be involved with. And, and again, I, I went along to the farm park just before Christmas, the year that I did this, um, to see how how it worked out. And it was just magical. <laughs> it was great to be part, part of you know so many children's Christmas. Yes, what the greater impact that you have just from doing that simple voiceover that might seem simple to them, but all the children are hearing your voice and mm -hmm. how magical is that, that you got to be part of that experience for every single one of those children that rode the train. Yeah, wow, that's, that's right. super exciting. Well, Liz, I know that so many of our listeners today are like, how do I get in touch with her? I know, you know, you live in the UK. Um, in Ireland, you know, you're you're not uh, in the United States, but um, anyone you work globally, I'm assuming with companies in the United yeah. States and all over the world. Yes. So how can what is the best way for someone to connect with you to to download something to to find how they can follow you on a regular basis, whether mm. it be Instagram or you know, what is the best way that you think that someone should reach out to you? Probably the easiest way is to go to my website, which is lizdrury.com. And all my social media links are on there. I'm pretty active on LinkedIn. Um, and I'm quite easy to find Liz Drury. If you type in Liz Drury voiceover, I'm, I should pop up on LinkedIn. So always happy to you know, create new connections on there. I, I am also on Facebook and, and Instagram as well. A little bit on Twitter, not as much as I used to be. Um, but uh, you know, feel free to connect with me whatever way you'd like to. So on Instagram, they can find you at Liz Drury VO. Right. That's Same right. with Twitter. Yes. Liz yes. Drury V as in Victor O for voiceover. Uh, and LinkedIn, it's Liz Drury voiceovers. Facebook, same thing. Liz Drury voiceovers. Or like she said, just go to LizDrury.com. I'm sure we can get on a newsletter there, or get more information from you there, connect with you there, have a conversation. So if you're out there and number one, you're thinking, I want to do this for a living. I would love to learn more from Liz. Reach out to her at LizDrury.com to find out how you can do that. If you are someone who owns a business and you're like, I love her voice. I want to use her voice <laughs> for my next project. Reach out to her at lizjury.com so you can hire her. I, I think your voice is gorgeous. It's amazing. Oh, but you. I'm also in the US. And anytime I hear an accent from <laughs> anybody in a different country other than the United States, I think it's amazing. Even, you know, state to state to state here in the United States, we all have different we all have different accents. Uh, so I'm always pulled toward and intrigued by 
uh, accents because I just think they're beautiful. <laughs> so just as you are so beautiful, Liz, and I'm so thankful that Jean introduced us and that you and I were able to um, connect and I was able to bring more um, exposure to you and your brand, um, you know, for your company and for the work that you do so other people can can hire you as well. So thank you so much for being on our show and for sharing the tips that you shared today to our listeners. No problem. Thank you very much for inviting me on, Colleen. All right, ladies and gentlemen, um, today you heard all of the tips on how to sound amazing. And like she said, smiling when you're speaking is one of the first tips of things that you can do. So if you think your voicemail sucks, go change it right now. (laughs) I'm just going to tell you on your cell phone or wherever people are getting information from you, uh, go change that and uh, re-record that today. Uh, so that you're happy with the sound. Uh, there's so much that we can do. And rem- I want you to remember this. You know, you're such a unique individual. You're the only you that's ever been. You're the only you that's ever going to be. So no one can sound as amazing as you. But if you don't bring it and you don't show up for your voice and you don't show up for your voicemail and you're not excited for the person that could be leaving a message, they're going to feel it on the other end. So this is your chance to sound amazing for the rest of your life and everything that you do and just be that unique person and show up as yourself. Liz didn't do anything special other than show up with her voice. And she did training and voice lessons and things that you know really brought her joy. So what are the things? in life that you want to do that you are not doing today that could bring you joy. You might just fall into a business that you don't even know exists today like Liz did. So um, pioneer your own future. It's up to you for you to, to figure out what it is that lights you up. So thank you again, Liz, for being on our show. Thank you, listeners, for your loyal dedication and for being with us and making us the top 3% of podcasts globally. I'm so thankful to all of you uh, and your listenership. With that, we will be back again next week. Thank you so much for joining us today. And don't forget, be you and be strong. Bye-bye for now. We hope you enjoyed our show today as our guests shared their secrets on designing their life by taking the necessary leaps to expand their influence and attract the right people and clients into their lives. To start these easy steps for yourself, be sure to visit www.colleenbiggs.net forward slash freebies to download the seven ways to increase your exposure today.